welcome back to the channel people today is tutorial tuesday and we are doing the iron on method with the napkin onto a piece of wood we are festive as shit today we are doing christmas i have christmas video coming out i know you guys september brandy calm down i can't help it i'm getting a head start on this i have some good christmas diys coming for you and this is actually going to be in that video, so you'll get to see the short end of how long it actually takes me to do the process here in this tutorial, and then you'll get to see how I edit it and shove it into that video for you guys to be able to watch it quickly and easy, so you'll have your options. Since I'm doing this step by step, we need to put our napkin to the side, and we're going to start with the piece of wood because we have to prep our piece of wood. Now, this is just a little crafter square piece and this is actually going to go on my bike wreath i know i'm making a wreath you guys just don't even know <laughs> i'm stressed out about this i'm watching a bow tutorial and everything i don't even make bows okay so we're going to prep this piece of wood and i'm gonna just paint this first and let this dry now i am gonna skip the painting so y'all don't have to watch me paint but we are, I'm going to just turn the camera off for a minute. I'm going to paint this white. I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to come back. It's all dry. Okay. And these, you can fill in if you want. I'm not going to fill these in because this is going to be under the side of, that has the florals on it for me. So I'm not covering this up. Um, or filling that in, I should say. Iron ore method is the best way to put on a napkin and reduce wrinkles like none i have a ton of people in the comments whenever they see me do my little sponge method and then i get these comments and some people are downright rude <laughs> where they're like oh the best way is the iron on method if you're familiar with my content you should know that i am very familiar with decoupage <laughs> and if i'm doing something particularly it is because that is the way I want to do it for that project. Now, the reason I do not do, and I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm going to tell y'all something I feel like <laughs> you need to know. This iron ore method, it takes time. Here's why. You have to paint your piece. If you do not have a heat gun, you have to thoroughly wait for this to dry. And even after you heat gun this you're going to need to let it dry till the wood is completely cooled, okay? So once the wood is completely cooled, then you got to add on two layers of Mod Podge, okay? You have to make sure this is completely dry. So we're going to have to put on one layer, let it dry, and I'm talking 20 to 30 minutes, another layer let that dry and they have to be completely dry if you try to put on a second layer to this without letting it dry all you're going to do is pull that mod podge and then you're going to have like a little bare spot okay so all in all to do this little piece and to film this video which i'll probably have the video like cut up enough that it's like 20 to 30 minutes this piece right here is probably going to take me two hours I don't want to have to wait two hours to put on a napkin every single time I do a decoupage, especially when I'm creating a video. It is so much easier for me to put this on, use my little sponge and gently press and it minimizes the wrinkles enough for me. However, there are so many different ways to decoupage and this is the absolute best way to minimize wrinkles. I want to make sure you guys have all the information at your fingertips to be able to create as many things as you want and give you all the real information that I have to give to you. Now that I have rambled on 50 minutes, I'm just kidding. We are going to put on a nice coat of this. Now I have had people also ask me if I use sponges. So let's talk about that. If I am not selling a product, I, or if I'm just creating a video and I call it for crafter's sake, I'll be like, for crafter's sake, because I'm just trying to get it done. You know what I'm saying? For crafter's sake, in a pinch, I will use one of these. I do not use these on a consistent basis, on a, con <laughs> on a consistent basis, because they will fall apart. I will find these little bits 
in my project just dangling here on the piece of wood and I'm not okay with that. So for me, I like using a nice acrylic brush and doing my Mod Podge. I actually have a small version of this. Hold on a second. These that I sell my little decoupage kits that work really well and they're like smaller projects. But I prefer this. I don't get little bits of sponge in my stuff. And I most certainly would never, ever use this for a top coat. Because you just never know when the sponge... Like, it won't fall apart initially. It's like, it takes a minute of using this for it to start happening. But in the chance that you're doing your top coat, because you always want to go over your napkin with a layer of the... Whatever sealer you want to use. They're using this is fine. But it might start fraying on your top coat and then you're stuck like trying to pick it out like oh shit you don't want to do that so we are going to use this to apply this we're going to do two coats and real quick before we do two coats i also want to point this out i'm not worrying about it because i'm not selling this project and i'm keeping it but i want you guys to have all the information <laughs> that you possibly can so look at this you see the raised bits around this if you are not sure that your napkin is going to be able to stick firmly to this and you feel there's lumpy bumpies everywhere sand it down get a 200 grit sandpaper do a quick once over and then wipe all the sand dust off from the paint just to get that off i am not worrying about it just because like i said i'm i don't plan on selling the piece and if i do you know then that will be an unforeseen thing <laughs> But we'll see. You're going to see how well it turns out with this. I'm confident in this, but I just want you to know if you see or notice this, do not be afraid to sand this down before you start with your layering. Now we have a nice coat on here. See how thick this is. You... When I'm doing regular napkin decoupage and we're just doing little by little, I do a very minimal amount. But for this, y'all don't play around with this stuff. Lather it on up. Our first coat is dry, so we are going to apply the second coat. I do want to say this because I don't think I said it. You do not want to use your heat gun on this. Absolutely not. You want to let this air dry, which is another reason why it is time consuming because you heating this up is going to give it the same effect as if you're using the iron. It's going to activate the Mod Podge and it's not going to work properly. I also want to say if you're going to put a finish on top of this, say you're doing it for coasters, you want to make sure that whatever finish you put on top will be able to withstand heat so if you put a coffee mug or anything like that on top of it you're going to want to make sure that it's dishwasher safe that it can withstand heat because if you do not and you just put this back on top of it you will reactivate the mod podge which will then mess up your napkin so applying the napkin on method with the iron is one thing, but how you choose to seal your projects for what you're using it for is going to determine the length of what you're able to use it for with the durability, if that makes sense. And of course, if you're just using this for a piece of wall decor or, you know, something like that, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about, you know, the sealer just put a layer of Mod Podge on here. I do also want to say it is really important for you to have your Mod Podge all the way up on the edges and you want it nice and hefty so this way as you're doing your iron on method that napkin is catching on your edges. So just another little tip there make sure that when you're applying this that you are having it nice and voluptuous on these edges all right and this way you guys can see like i ain't messing around you know what i mean look at that 
Look at all that deliciousness. It's on there nice and good. And now, now I gotta let it dry again. So I'll see y'all in a little bit. Well, for you, it's like two seconds. For me, it's you guys. Know, it's not fair, but you know, it is what it is. I'll be all back. All right. So we are dry. And truth be told, it really took an hour for this to completely dry. So about an hour and a half total between the first coat and second coat but as you can see like I really lathered that second coat up so I'm not surprised that this took that long again I just want to make sure that this is done properly so I get it right on the first time for this video you guys feel free if you don't want to put this much Mod Podge on there I'm sure it will still stick but this just makes me feel fuzzy inside so I use that much we're going to be using some parchment paper I have two pieces here actually you know what I think we need to let's take this camera up a notch so y'all can there we go is that better all right so we're gonna put one piece on the bottom we're gonna use this napkin and I'm going to, let me do it this way. I'm going to use the whole napkin. We're going to use the whole napkin. And I'm going to actually cut this, which is not something I usually do. I usually kind of break it. But for iron ore methods, I kind of like to do a whole piece when we're doing these. So let me go find my scissors. I'll be right back. We're going to just cut this napkin on down and I'm actually going to rip a corner because it pulls apart better for me. Oh, you guys are going to love this. So I didn't plan this. <laughs> I did not plan this, but it actually, I think it's a good thing for us to do this tutorial on. This napkin is one ply. One ply. So it's thicker. Look how thick that is than a normal napkin so i'm using this in my video that i'm filming right now i'm dual wielding videos today um and look just to give you an idea so this is already look how thin look how thin that is right you guys see that okay now let me bring this joint up here look how thin this is compared to that so I think this is going to be excellent let's get on to iron it on our napkin I'm going to use my little Cricut iron okay you guys can use whatever iron you want they have small I have one of them too around here somewhere they have small irons that you can get from Walmart for nine or ten bucks they are just a little bit bigger than this and it's got a cute little hand on it I do have one don't know where it is but for the sake of this video since this is right next to me on my shelf I'm gonna use this and if you have a bigger iron you just want to slam that sucker on down there you know by all means you go right ahead one thing I wish somebody would have told me <laughs> before I went and ironed anything is to make sure that your napkin is completely covering the object where the Mod Podge is because if you do not and you put your little piece of paper down over top of this, remember? So this little piece of parchment, guess what's going to happen? Your parchment paper is going to stick to your project. That's fun. So we're going to make sure that everything's covered, which it looks like it is. You're going to lay this down. And I do have one on the bottom. And I'm going to just do this in kind of like a circular motion. And honestly, there's really no right or wrong way to kind of apply your iron. Just pretend like you're ironing a pair of pants or something. You know, it's not very difficult. I will say that since this is a thicker napkin, we should have a beautiful tight hold on this thing. Like it should be super solid. So I'm really got to be careful too because you can easily burn your finger once I actually feel like I have the napkin on here really well I then like to take the iron and go around the edges real slow like just making sure that that Mod Podge is melted in to our napkin and it's not going to come off because at the end of the day we're going to sand the extra bits of napkin that are left way to check 
you just kind of, you know, take a pause, see how easy that pops off, and then just go like this and make sure that your napkin is attached all the way around. I do want to show you guys this. So because, oh, <laughs> sorry. Because the color on the napkin is a little dominant, see how it kind of came off on your paper? Be mindful because if this is not glued all the way down and then you go stick back one, you go iron, guess what you're gonna have? You're gonna have colored spots in different spots. So if you notice that happens, get yourself a different piece of this and then go back over it if you want to. Don't go reapplying because these colors will end up in a different spot and you're not going to be happy and then you ruined your project because there it is so hard to come back once you mess this up. My bad. I had a phone call and the doorbell's being wrong. I had life going on there. Okay, so we're going to just see how it's melted in the edge of this. It is just absolutely beautiful. So the higher grit, because it's a one ply, that is actually going to just get this off very flawlessly. Where if you are you have a thinner napkin, you don't need such a high grit. You could probably go in with a 200 and it'll come off just fine. And I would recommend doing downward motions if you go I don't want to mess up my project but if you go like this you chance oh see I did it a little bit Urgh. for the sake of YouTube I love you guys um see how frayed it a little bit so you want to not go like this when you're doing iron on method because your piece is glued down okay so to keep it flawless it just and I mean, seriously, I mean, I can get rough with it, as you guys can see. I'm like, stop playing around for YouTube. And just, you know. That is going to be it for this little iron on method. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got some educational value out of it. It really is super simple to do. And it is a flawless, stunning look. And it definitely helps. <laughs> this was a one ply because it's seamless. It's... Oh my gosh, it's so seamless. And when it's dry, like, ooh. However, I do want to say this real quick. If you want to apply a sealer on this, go for it. I continuously have people ask, do I put sealers over these projects? Absolutely. But again, I will state, you need to make sure that whatever sealer you're using, it is going to accommodate what your project is for. If you're going to be putting this in the dishwasher, I would recommend using something that's dishwasher safe. If you're going to be using this just for a piece of decor around the house, then just a typical this is fine. If you're going to be putting something on top of this and it's going to be hot, make sure that your sealer has a heat protection in it. If you're going to be using this like it is going to be a high high traffic area and things are going to get put on it then you're going to want to make sure that you're using a actual sealer that has a good quality in it for the durability to protect your piece so i hope all this information helps you guys stick around for the final reveal and until next time